For those of y'all who grew up in church or in church right now, you know exactly what this feeling is in a worship service where like it's a great song, everyone's super emotional and they don't want to leave that song because the worship leader's like, maybe we should just stay right here. And it's cool for a moment, but then eventually it's like, all right, are we going to keep playing the uh, five, six, four chord progression? Oh Lord, you're just so worthy. We just want to stay right here. Yeah. All right, y'all, I'm done trying to think through like what my new channel is gonna be about. I know that I'll get there eventually. The thing that's been on my mind is don't ruin a good moment by being unwilling to let it go. So right now I'm in Los Angeles, California. I live, I purchased a home in Atlanta, Georgia, top of pandemic, like end of March, early April, 2020, right? Like this is like back when everybody was buying up all the toilet paper but they weren't buying soap that was always odd to me that the the shelves the shelves always had hand soap i i in a pandemic i thought that that would be one of the th anyways i decided to drive my car from atlanta georgia to los angeles california uh, i actually have a whole vlog that i'm going to do on that that trek over over across the country the united states of america in an electric car very interesting and i've been wanting to come to los angeles for a long time and i think i've just been putting it off i come out here and visit for a little while then i leave but i've always wanted to come here long term at least for a few months right and that's what i'm doing right now and hopefully maybe possibly i don't know moving here at the beginning of the 2020 pandemic when i purchased my first home, it was a great thing, man. I had been so nomadic, bouncing around to other people's homes for so long, and I didn't really have my own place for several years. And so to be able to finally not just have my own place, but to own it, to have purchased a home, it's it's perfect. And I started to make it my home. I started furnishing it and shooting all these videos in it and, and just feeling at home. But also part of another conversation, another video is, you know, when I left the church, I left the Christian faith, I announced it uh, last year, August 2021, uh, my community started to change a bit. And I still have a lot of great friends in the church. Um, they're really cool people and I still hang out with uh, some of them and I love them. I don't really have any, I don't really have any hate or a animosity for the church really. Uh, it was just a decision, you know, I'm not leaving because of church hurt or God hurt or whatever other things that people try to, you know, put on to me. But the reality is even when you're cool with people, like you don't relate the same way. Like, of course you want to have friends with, you want to have friends that have differing points of view from different religious thought, philosophical standpoints, political backgrounds, socioeconomic circles, like all of those things are great to make you a well-rounded person and also just to make the world a, a better place and a better thinking place, a better loving place. But at the same time, you also know at some point you have to settle into your tribe. You settle into people who are very similar to you, even if not through socioeconomic or, or religious standpoint per se, they at least resonate with you in, in the way that you view life ultimately. If I'm honest, I, in many ways, I, I sort of lost that. And I found myself very isolated at home. And thankfully, I have really great friends. I have a great therapist. And I have really great tools that have allowed me to ward off some pretty deep depressive episodes that I've been through in the past that, that didn't happen really, you know, after this, you know, separation from the church. The temptation was there, though. But I knew I had to do something. I knew I had to, there had to be a, a practical thing that I did. And every time I come to LA, I always love it here. Uh, not because of the beaches and because of, you know, the really cool things to do out here. It's just, I used to really avoid LA and because they, they had like, it seemed like everyone was trying to be someone. And ironically, here I am trying to do something as well. But like, it wasn't just about being someone, it was also only wanted to be around people or trying to connect with people who couldn't help you be someone. Like everyone wanted, everyone wanted to use someone else to climb up the ladder. I'm projecting, I'm sure, and I'm, I'm making up big assumptions, but that was the feeling I felt. It felt very pretentious. It's all about fashion. It's about who you knew, how many followers you had. But I, I just didn't give it enough time. And I started to really meet some really cool people that are nothing at all like that. Found myself spending more and more time out here. And when I was in Atlanta, I was looking forward to the next time I'd come out to Los Angeles. And I could move, but here's the thing. I've been so sold on not renting. Like I don't want to rent. And it's just really difficult to own in LA. 
LA. Like in Atlanta, especially in 2020, it was a lot easier to own. Uh, I know the housing market is crazy right now, but if you think the housing market is crazy in Atlanta, like LA is just... And then I started to realize that I was sitting on something simply because of the nostalgia and the thing that it, the, the symbol that it created for me and not necessarily what it was actually doing for me. I was making a good thing or a good moment go bad because I was unwilling to let it go. And by let it go, I don't mean I'm gonna sell my home because <laughs> the way this market is, I am definitely not selling right now. I'm letting that thing increase in value. But just leaving Atlanta, like, taking the risk to just dip out and instead milking out these moments where I'm just, I'm not really flourishing emotionally, I'm not flourishing artistically. And in all of the intangible ways, it made better sense to stay in Atlanta. And so this is my attempt just coming out here for a few months and maybe it turns into something more to not ruin a good moment, to let that be what it be. I think sometimes we're shamed or guilted. The job that you're complaining about is the one that you used to pray about. The thing that you have right now is the thing that you used to want so bad. And that may be true. The job that you prayed for, the job that you longed for, it was probably great, but there's nothing wrong with saying this moment served its purpose. And the longer I try to hold on to this moment for nostalgia, because I'm afraid of the next moment, because I'm afraid of moving on to something uncomfortable, you begin to ruin the thing that was good. Let that thing just be and move on. You know, I was reading this book by Alan Watts that sort of put this thought in my in my mind. It was the book is called the Inse the Wisdom of Insecurity, and he likened it to Beethoven. He was uh, referring to uh, and these different symphony composers who would create this really great song, and then the climax would end on this big crescendo. And because they didn't want to let it go, they just would play the same chord over and over and over again or same chord progression over and over again because they didn't want to leave the moment. They, there was, they didn't know what to do next other than just end it. But it reminded me of like, for those of y'all who grew up in church or in church right now, you know exactly what this feeling is in a worship service where like it's a great song, everyone's super emotional and they don't want to leave that song because the worship leader's like, oh, everyone's into this. Like, oh my gosh, like this is really working. Maybe we should just stay right here. And it's cool for a moment, but then eventually it's like, all right, are we gonna keep playing the uh, five, six, four chord progression? For those of y'all who do music, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't, let me grab my guitar and show you exactly what I'm talking about. You know what it is. This is it right here. Five, six, four. You just say it right there. Oh Lord, you're just so worthy. We just wanna stay right here. Yeah. And it's just gonna stay right there. And there's something about that four chord, the C right here, that it's not really quite, it's not going away like the D is. I feel like the way it go, the D chord goes away and the G resolves. See, it's the end of it. Done. The C just kind of sits right there in the middle. It's not going away. It's not coming here either. You'll recognize it next time you go to church, man, I promise. <laughs> and it's like, people in the crowd are like, okay, great moment. It's going to get a little long now. You know, friends that you may have had from childhood that every time y'all get together, all y'all do is rehash old memories from high school or maybe college, but you don't really have any truly new memories or new experiences with them. Y'all haven't moved forward. Y'all just keep playing the same chord and you feel some obligation to them because they were there so early on. And it's like, ah, maybe they were great for that particular season. And it's okay to not ruin that by trying to milk it for more than what it has. So anyways, I'm out here working on music, trying to move forward in my life, creatively, emotionally, philosophically, spiritually, all the alis, emotionally, socially, psychologically, philosophically. And I hope to continue just to share thoughts like this with y'all as they come, hopefully they're helpful. I'll be vlogging and just showing behind the scenes of my life here in LA in my new Airbnb.